Ayan. Ito po yung aking uh, topic for today. It is how to prepare your OFW's exit plan through a comprehensive and effective reintegration program. And uh, sabi nga ito pong topic nito, it's very deep at uh, malalim ang hugot po nito sa akin because uh, I've been uh, an OFW for uh, a long, long time. And my journey as an OFW, I started my career as an OFW in 1990. Uh, I, uh, after working with AGNP or Atlantic Gulf and Pacific sa Batangas, it was a marine fabrication shop. And yung pong project namin from Batangas was uh, transported into India. So yung uh, sa Mumbai, uh, Mumbai that was before. And then after that, after ng aming hookup projects um, offshore, uh, I was transferred to Saudi Arabia, Yambu. I was there for 11 years sa Yambu. Then I moved to Bahrain. And then Qatar, I worked with the uh, Qatar Petroleum subsidiary, Qatar Vinyl Company. I was there for seven years. And then I went back to, uh, to Saudi Arabia again in Jeddah. And then in 2010, I moved to UAE. And hanggang ngayon, it's almost 11 years. So nandito po ako sa Middle East for the past uh, more than 30 years. So kung makikita po natin, Yung aking journey as an OFW ay hindi po maigse. It's been a long time. And uh, nga po itong uh, reintegration program, I've been uh, teaching this for almost a decade na. A decade na, ito, matagal na itong tinuturo. And uh, I know personally itong mga kasama natin, sina Past President uh, Roy, and then sina Sir Tony, and so sina Sir uh, Sayed. And sabi nga po, um, magkakasama tayo dito as an OFW and itong aking share sa inyo will be helpful especially those doon sa mga baguhan o ngayon palang uh, pumapasok sa industriya ng pagiging isang OFW and okay so uh, actually uh, ang ito pong topic po natin for today is in the perspective of an uh, practicing professional uh, engineer as a uh, OFW and a project manager. Ang title ko nga po, sabi ko nga kanina, How to Prepare Your OFW's Exit Plan Through a Comprehensive and Effective Reintegration. Actually, sa atin, as an OFW, sa ating journey dito sa pagiging overseas Filipino workers, meron po tayong tatlong stages or tatlong phases. Uh, yung pong, uh, tinatawag ko na at the beginning, some of you are still new as an OFW, so ang ang nangyayari po diyan ay hindi po kayo ah uh, say uh, baguhan pa lang kayo and this uh, lecture uh, will be helpful for all of you. And then uh, yung iba naman ay still in the process. Uh, kagaya yung mga nandito sa Bahrain, sa Kuwait, uh, you're still in the OFW, OFW process. And yung pangatlo, uh, na third stage natin as an, uh, sa ating journey ay yung tinatawag nating the reintegration and some of you are already reintegrated, kagaya ni na Prestoni. So they are already reintegrated. So these are the three phases uh, na pwede nating uh, kabilangan as an OFW. Number one, at the beginning, yung mga nagsisimula pa lang. Pangalawa is yung on the process. And ang pangatlo is yung tinatawag nating for integration or reintegrated na. So how to prepare your exit plan through a comprehensive and effective integration program. And this is Prof. Roque Senga. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat sa Philippines. Okay, so there are four common industry classification with regards to projects. Meron pong apat na classification ang projects. Sabi nga po sa kanina, uh, I'm talking uh, sa inyo in the perspective of a project manager. So meron pong apat na classification ang projects. Okay, so uh, construction industry. Either you are in residential projects, building projects, or engineering, or industrial. So ito po yung four main project classification na typical na ginagawa natin dito sa Middle East. And sa, sa residential, uh, walang well, mechanical dito. Although may, we are uh, support, but the project manager, mostly either architecture or civil. So hindi natin porte ang residential. Support lang tayo, either MEP, O yung mga ganyan, HVAC, so support. Ayan. When it comes to building, hindi rin po sa atin yan. Uh, healthcare, offices, education, religious, 
public safety, amusement, mostly it is still under ng, uh, civil or architecture. So residential, building, and then yung pangatlo is engineering. That includes yung bridges, tunnel, dams, levees. Yung levees, ito po yung mga flood control, dike, uh, yung mga ganun, sewage treatment, water treatment, railroads, pipeline. And again, um, it is mostly porte pa rin po ng civil engineering. Okay? And for mechanical engineer, nandito po tayo. And uh, that includes yung refineries, steel mills, power plants, smelter, chemical plants, nuclear aviation. Ito po ang porte ng mga mechanical engineer as a project manager. And with regards to market share, I, uh, we only have few, 5 to 10 percent ng uh, mga projects. Kaya kung titignan po natin, there are only few mechanical engineers that are goes beyond doon po sa tinatawag po nating project and engineering manager. Because we have a limited uh, projects na tayo po ang naglilid. And, okay, so... Yan, yan po yung uh, four common industry classification and example po ng projects. Uh, as mentioned po kanina ng ating pong, uh, uh, kasama sa PSME that uh, I am the chairman po ng IPMA or International Project Management uh, Association Philippines. And one of our mandate is to move our world forward in which all projects succeed. And dito po sa ating uh, journey, as OFW, can we consider this as a project? And I'm sure um, everybody will agree, yes, Prof, uh, yung ating journey as an OFW can be considered as a project. Yeah, okay? So, um, i-apply natin ngayon ang uh, project management concept. Bakit ba naging project ang ating OFW journey? Because definitely, it's a unique individual yan. So unique ang ating OFW process. Okay, we have defined start and end date. Kagaya po natin, uh, akin personally, I started my OFW journey in 1990. So that's the start. Okay, and then yung end date soon, but I'm already retired actually. Uh, hindi na po ako, uh, all I'm saying is that I'm more on uh, business rather than working with ADNOC. Uh, that's the last assignment I have. But I'm still engaged with business development and running my own business. And then we have time defined resources. We have a specific objective. Example pinito, when we come dito sa Middle East, ang ating objective is to earn money, to support the family, and matangkilik po natin ang pag-aaral ng ating po mga anak. So that will be a specific objective. And habang na tayo po ay nandito sa Middle East working, or uh, sa Brunei, sa Singapore, sa mga kayo naroon, we have to plan, execute, and control yung ating OFW journey. Yan, yan po yung dahil sinasabi po natin. And every project has its own complexities like technical, uh, culture, uh, yung organization, resources, team, politics. Iba po ang... Um, uh, there's a certain uniqueness in every country. Kagaya po na nabagit ko kanina, I've been in... Uh, almost all uh, GCC countries. So iba ang uh, culture sa Kuwait, iba ang culture sa Saudi Arabia, iba ang batas dito sa UAE, it's more tolerant. So again, this adds complexities ng ating uh, project, okay? ng ating OFW journey. And, and IPMA, we have 72 countries and we are part dito sa group of uh, organization within the Project Management Association. So, hindi po ito PMI, which is uh, under ng PMI USA. We are uh, autonomous in deciding which is better for our organization. And we have three reference guides or reference standards that we can use, and it is free, downloadable po ito sa ating IPMA world. We have po tayo tinatawag na uh, Individual Competence Baseline, uh, Project Excellence Baseline, and Organizational Competence Baseline, which are used by uh, institutions, uh, academe, for teaching their MSc in project management and PhD in project management. Yeah. So ito po yung nagbukas sa akin when I took my uh, MSc, um, sorry, MSc in project management sa France. Uh, ito po yung mga natutunan ko when it comes dito po sa practice ng project management. And when it comes to global standards, ito po yung uh, iba't ibang standards na ginagamit when it comes to project management. And in order, for have, in order for us to have effective project management, 
meron pong tatlong aspect na kailangan po natin tignan. Number one is yung organization. Who is the organization? Uh, our project must be aligned with the mission and vision of the organization, the strategies. Uh, kailangan yung pong organization po natin na pinagtatrabahuan or initiating the project must be competent. Okay? So kailangan may competency requirement din po ang organization. And second, yung pong people, yung pong mga tao po natin. Uh, you as a project manager, yung team members natin, uh, meron din pong competency requirement yan. And at the same time, ganun din po ang ating pong project. So these are the three important aspects in project management. The organization, the people, and the project. And meron po yung pong ating standard are covering for all of these. Yan yung uh, organization competence baseline. Uh, individual competence baseline and project excellence baseline. So, ito po yung ating organizational uh, standards na pwede natin gamitin for our practice ng, uh, uh, ng project management, global project management. And we have ito pong tinatawag nating uh, four level certification. Uh, we have the certified project management associate, the certified project manager, certified senior project manager, and certified project director. Uh, for level, and, uh, ang very common question po sa akin when it comes to certification ng project management, how it differs with PMP and PMI. Uh, there's a big thing. Uh, uh, it is like RME and PME. When you graduate ng inyong uh, college, you took the board exam, then you are a certified, uh, you are a registered mechanical engineer. So that is uh, um, knowledge-based uh, registration. But after some time, after getting the experience, then you need to uh, you will apply for the uh, professional mechanical engineer. Then you need to prepare the report. Then you have to attend yung pong tinatawag po nating uh, assessment or uh, evaluation, face-to-face -face evaluation. So ito po ang difference ng PMP and IPMA. Ang PMP po, it's more about knowledge-based certification, while ours is a competency-based certification. So you need to have your knowledge, skills, ability, plus experience, which is verifiable by an interview, by the panel interview. Then you have to prepare the report. So it's a longer process, but it can prove that you are a competent project manager. So yun po yung ginagawa po natin. And ang chairman po natin dito with IPMA uh, certification board is isa rin pong uh, mechanical engineer na si uh, Engineer Robert Peria. And IPMA Philippines is uh, uh, built or uh, founded by mostly mechanical engineers dito po sa UAE. Kasama po dyan si Sir Roy, si Sir Gimo, and uh, si Sir Jeffrey, Uwe, and uh, all other those. Uh, kasama din po dyan yung mga ating mga kasama sa, sa PSME. Okay, so balikan po natin yung aking lecture. Nag-sidetrack lang po ako ng konti. So that, uh, may palumanin ko sa inyo what is IPMA. So, what are the three phases of OFW, OFW journey at the beginning, in the process, and then yung reintegration? Ayan, balikan po natin ito. So, um, actually, when you reintegrate sa Philippines, you have only four choices, or maybe more, but ito po yung main uh, choices na meron tayo as an OFW. Uh, number one, as consultant. Okay? So maybe some of you are already uh, planning to become a consultant sa Philippines after uh, 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 bumalik sa Pilipinas or after ng inyong OFW journey. Uh, tayo, meron tandaan po natin, one of the requirements para sa practice po as consultant, yet you should have a high-profile professional. Ito po is valid for high professional, high profile professional. And this includes yung high leadership and management skills. Unfortunately, uh, hindi po ito madami. Okay? It's less than 3%. Okay? So, ginagawa na po namin ito ng study. Pangalawa, yung tinatawag po natin akadim. At kagaya naman po natin, na meron tayong tinatawag na outcome-based education and meron din po nga uh, CHED CMO or uh, memorandum order that only those with master's degree can teach. And so isa rin po yan sa so mga requirement. So less than 1% po yan ng mga OFW na bumalik na meron pong master's degree na nakuha while working overseas at uh, uh, nakapasok po sa, uh, sa um, university, kagaya po ni na Prestoni. Then uh, we have the entrepreneur. Let's also 
Uh, yung mga, mga OFW na nakaipon, uh, na bumalit sa Pilipinas, which uh, they are financially stable, meron silang business-oriented uh, mentality, and they start their own uh, entrepreneurial company. And uh, titignan po natin, out of these four, as employee, consultant, academe, entrepreneur, ang pinaka-bestseller po ng OFW pagbalik sa Pilipinas ay back to employee. Uh, Sad to say, pero ang reason po dito, they are, are not prepared to reintegrate sa Philippines. Sabi nga po natin, if you don't plan, you plan to pay. And ang journey po natin, kailangan ay uh, pinaplano po natin how we would like to reintegrate sa Pilipinas. Ayan. Kaya nga po yung topic ko today, it's about uh, how to have effective uh, reintegration program para po sa ating mga OFW. And, okay? And how we prepare, yung po ang mag-dictate ng ating successful or failure reintegration sa Philippines. Okay? Sa project management, meron po tayong tinatawag, projects don't go wrong, they start wrong. Tanda po natin yan. Sa project, kailangan maganda ang intrada mo in order to have effective project. One of the reason kung bakit maraming failure sa projects natin, it is because we started it wrong. Kailangan magsimula tayo ng ayos. Sabi ko nga, if you start good, you will end good in projects. If you start bad, you will end bad in projects. Kaya nga, projects don't go wrong. They start wrong. And tayo as an OFW sa ating journey, dapat critical sa atin is yung stage one, which is at the beginning, And then yung in the process. So dito, pag-aralan po natin yung mga tips on how to prepare your OFW exit plan through a comprehensive and effective integration program. Yung mga nakareintegrate na, wala na, late na. Kasi nandun na eh. Uh, ba? Yung mga nagpa-planong mag-reintegrate uh, mag sa Philippines, so you're still in the process, so pwede pa. Okay? You still have time to adjust to monitor, to control. Yan po yung mga typical na ginagamit po natin sa project management. So, these are the tips that I would like to share with you. Ito po yung aking mga uh, sabi nga, take away, key take away tips dito po sa aking uh, session, no? dito sa aking lecture. Number one is to have a good start. So, para sa overseas Filipino mechanical engineer, dapat alam natin yung good start ng ating OFW journey. Pangalawa, Uh, continuously improve your OFW process. At ang pangatlo, make a legacy. So these are the three points, three takeaway points na nais ko pong i-share sa inyo as an OFW sa ating mga kasama na overseas Filipino mechanical engineer. Have a good start, continuously improve your OFW process, and then make a legacy. And again, projects don't go wrong, they start wrong. So ang critical dito, as a mechanical engineer, is ano, yung at the beginning. Yeah. So, tips for a good start. Okay. In projects, we have very tight na tawag na triple constraint. Ano ba yung triple constraint? Scope, time, and cost. Yan yung uh, typical na PMP or PM bookers na term na ginagamit natin. Scope, time, and cost. So, dito, uh, nais ko pong uh, banggitin natin uh, uh, when it comes to scope, kailangan Let us begin with the end in mind. Uh, very common po yan sa mga project scoping. Begin with the end in mind. So kung when you are uh, designing a project, ang iniisip na natin, paano ko kaya i-deliver yung aking uh, uh, product or services? Uh, deliverable po natin. Begin with the end in mind. Pangalawa, define your OFW duration. Hanggang kailan ba ako magiging OFW? Ayan. Hanggang kailan? Uh, so yung time frame. And then pangatlo, Uh, how I can maximize for my reintegration budget. Kailangan ma-maximize po natin yung reintegration budget natin. Eh. ba? Diba? So kailangan uh, nakaipon po tayo. How I can maximize. So these are the three uh, triple constraints. Uh, three, oh, yung triple constraints po natin uh, on how to have a good start. So isa yung same po natin. Okay? Let us uh, start dito sa uh, A1. Begin with the end in mind. So, ang first tip ko po sa inyo sa mga baguhan na gusto maging OFW is be acquainted with mechanical engineering career path. 
mechanical engineering career path. Pangalawa, it is to transition from technical to managerial position. And I will tell you why it is important. So be acquainted with mechanical engineering career path, then transition from technical to managerial position. When I first uh, showed this sa mga Pilipino na dito sa Middle East, ang tanong ko is, Pinoy, mechanical engineer, nasaan ka na ba? Nasaan ka na dito? Okay, so isa-isahin natin yan. Uh, okay, so dito, makikita after graduation, so since this is for the start, start up sa mga mechanical engineer na bago pa lang magiging OFW, you have uh, after graduation, uh, Either you have a good start or bad start. Ang bad start, ito yung mga survival job. Marami din mga mechanical engineer, license engineer, na nagtatrabaho sa non-cognate career, kagaya ng mga insurance broker, call center agent, real estate agent, real estate agent, then sales and others. That's fine. Survival job. Ito talagang kailangan-kailangan at wala na mapasukan, sige, go tayo yan. But don't forget that you have to go back sa inyong first lab. Ang first lab natin, syempre, kung ano yung tinapos natin undergraduate degree, which is mechanical engineering. Yung iba sa atin, di ba? Mayroong five years, six years, uh, minsan, di ba? Mag magna, magna nine years, bago nakakaroon ng mechanical engineering degree, di ba? Suma, sumasampu. So, mahalin naman natin yun. Yan. Okay? So, mechanical engineer, so, kung kayo ay nasa survival job, then you have to go back dito sa ating first lab. And then, uh, tandaan natin, when it comes to uh, career route, sa mechanical engineer, meron tayong apat. Normally, tatlo lang yan uh, sa ibang uh, discipline. But in mechanical, meron pa tayong isa pa. Uh, and that is facility management. So some of you will be in construction industry. Some of you are working with consulting industry. And then some of mechanical engineers are working with facility management. And then some are in the academe or academia. So these are the four uh, routes na makikita natin na pinagtatrabahohan ng mga mechanical engineer sa construction industry, sa consulting industry, then sa facilities, and then sa academe. And so paano ba yan? So tinan natin, kung tinan po natin, uh, let us take itong construction. Uh, after uh, yung initial professional development program, which is normally two years, Uh, some of you are uh, working with construction engineering, uh, construction engineer as construction engineer. Then some are uh, working as project engineer, uh, quantity surveyor, estimator, uh, planning scheduler, contracts, QAQC, HSE, material engineer, procurement engineer. Okay? Then after that, after some time, you take a senior role, it becomes lead construction engineer, such as senior project engineer, senior QS, senior planner, senior uh, contracts, senior QAQC engineer, senior HS engineer, senior materials engineer, and then senior procurement engineer. But some, after having a technical function, go to managerial position or managerial function. And that is yung project manager, yung mga project supports manager, and dito yung project control manager, uh, contracts manager, uh, QAQC manager, HST uh, manager, material manager, procurement. So this is for construction route. Sa design naman, pwedeng uh, uh, maging engineering designer, mechanical engineering designer. Or, uh, on my case, I'm a piping designer. I start my career as a piping and mechanical designer para sa AGNP. Then later on, I was assigned as a yeah, design specialist, working with the team, the mechanical engineer. Then naging multidiscipline. Uh, you are leading... Um, Let's say uh, you're becoming a lead engineer dealing with all the disciplines, civil, mechanical, structural, etc. And then you are promoted into engineering manager. So these are uh, from technical into a managerial function. Okay. So some, after gaining some industry experience, uh, they took the MSc or uh, Master of Science in Construction Management, uh, Engineering Management, uh, Mechanical Engineering, And then they become uh, faculty as part ng uh, compliance ng uh, CHED memorandum, memorandum order na ang pwede magturo is yung merong master's degree sa undergraduate courses. Hindi kagaya dati. If you take the board exam at top 10 ka, uh, the university will take you as a faculty. Not now. Kasi ngayon is part ng ating OBE requirement to be at par with the other country and to uh, yung mapil yung mismatch kailangan ay meron ng industry experience plus you have the master's degree 
And then later on, after having itong uh, entry, then you can be as Dean of Engineering. So that is for the academic route. So construction, design, or consulting, and then academic. But very peculiar sa so mechanical engineer is yung facility engineer. Uh, some of you are working with utilities and energy. Yan, kasama din dyan yung mga cooling water, mga ganyan. And then yung facility operations. Uh, some mechanical engineers are assigned as operation engineer in a facility. Uh, yung business services, planning and development, continuous improvement, uh, preventive, uh, RBI, mga ganyan. And then quality, inspection, sustainability, MEP, maintenance. And then after some time, you become a senior facility engineer. And then you become a facility manager. So with this uh, diagram, Pinoy Mechanical Engineer, nasan ka na, you can see the functions as technical and then managerial. And then later on, after the managerial, you will go back, uh, you will go to the next level, which is running your own business as CEO, as entrepreneur. So these are how mechanical engineers uh, progresses. So kaya nga, ang sabi ko kanina, begin with the end in mind. Nasaan ka na at ano ang gusto mo uh, bago ka mag-reintegrate sa Pilipinas. Because having this career path will dictate ano ang uh, magiging uh, outcome ng iyong reintegration sa Philippines. And, okay? And ang goal natin while working in the field, uh, while working overseas is to complete yung ating uh, sabi nga yung ating desire na tayo ay umabot sa engineering, uh, umabot sa managerial position. Okay? And there's a reason bakit kailangan itagit natin ang managerial position. Okay? So, yeah, from being technical into a managerial position habang tayo ay nasa OFW journey. Begin with the end in mind. Meron tayong career path. Meron na tayong roadmap. Alam na natin. And we can gauge up. Teka muna. Uh, asan ako ngayon? Ilang taon na bang experience ko? Bakit nandito pa? Tandaan natin, one of the reason bakit maraming mechanical engineer ang mababa ang sahod, ulitin ko, bakit maraming mechanical engineer ang mababa ang sahod because they are staying in a low-paying position. Ulitin ko, bakit mababa ang sahod ng karamihan ng mechanical engineer because they are staying in a low-paying position because they did not realize, kung ikaw yan, sorry, ay hindi mo nakita agad ano ang importance ng career path. Tandaan natin, we are in a journey. At ito ay preparation for our future integration. Uh, okay? okay? So, why leadership and management skills are important? Ang sabi dito sa research in 1997 ni Russell and Yao, an engineer is hired for her and his technical skills, fired for full people skills, and promoted for leadership and management skills. So, pwede kang i-hire, magaling ka, technically, that's good. Pwede kang tanggalin, kasi kung hindi ka, kung kaya mo mag-blend uh, o mag-communicate, wala kang people skills, pwede kang tanggalin ng uh, company, but you can be promoted for your, due to your leadership and management skills. So dito, titignan po natin ang project management skills in career development. You are hired because of your technical skills. Tama? But tayo as mechanical engineer, we are technically capable. And because of that, we will be hired by the company. Pero if you want to be promoted, ang first promotion po natin, ay yung tinatawag po nating management promotion. Maring, uh, you know, sabi nga natin kanina, uh, you'll, be, you'll be managing uh, more people. You know, diba? From technical, ito managerial. So that's the first promotion. Ang third, second promotion po natin is promoted due to leadership skills. And, and every time na lilipat po tayo from technical to managerial, you, we are adapt, sabi nga, we are um, upgrading ourselves. Hindi lang man po hard skills. Kailangan idagdagan po natin yung mga uh, soft skills po natin. Kagaya ng ano, communication. We have to upgrade yung ating negotiation skills. We have to upgrade yung how to manage a meeting effectively. How to delegate. Uh, all these things are part po ng ating managerial uh, skills. 
And after that, andyan na po yung leadership. That includes yung mga commercial management, and that includes yung strategic planning, and that includes yung mga mission, vision, and all those things, strategic um, uh, entity, uh, tasks na kailangan po natin in order for us to have the second promotion. So we are hired due technical skills, uh, fired due to poor people skills, but we can be promoted if we have management skills. And then another promotion uh, up to the executive level if you have the leadership skills. So technical, uh, XYZ, uh, technical to managerial, and then to leadership. So dito po yung ating dapat matutunan, begin with the end in mind, we have the knowledge, we have yung career path, which will serve as guide, or ano yung target natin uh, sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, OFW process before we integrate and what we need in order to be promoted. So management and leadership. Ayan. Okay, so what is management? By layman's language, it's a simple term, doing things through others. Why I insisting for managerial? Kasi... If you remember, pag kayo po ay technical, kayo yung laging gumagawa. Okay? So, iyan po yung uh, ano natin. Sabi nga, iyan yung mga typical na ginagawa po natin when we are still uh, technical. But once you become a manager, you need to delegate. Kaya nga kung makikita natin, yung mga uh, technical expert, sila yung mga naiiwan sa opisina, sila yung mga nag-overtime, sila yung nagtatrabaho kahit sa bahay, pero yung manager nila, nasa uh, nagwawalwal na nasa labas na 'di ba so alas 5 papasok late uh uuwi late uh, maaga 'di ba so why because uh, they know the art of management which is doing things through others and tayo as a project manager as engineering manager we have our subordinates working with us Ayan. at ang role natin as a project manager as engineering manager as facility management uh, practitioner is to lead and manage our team. Yeah. Okay? So, dito naman sa ating define your OFW duration. Kung makikita po natin, why, uh, binga, why you need to sacrifice long term away from your family? Pwede naman, di ba? As long as na-maximize natin yung reintegration budget. We have the time duration and we have yung uh, target uh, budget. So, Ang next tip na gusto ko pong ibigay sa inyo is focus on your career progression and early exit plan. Okay? There are four career types na nangyayari po sa isang worker uh, as a mechanical engineer. Either spiral po tayo o transitory, hindi po ito yung para sa atin. Paano ba yung transitory at spiral? Minsan project engineer o minsan ay naging uh, lead engineer. Tapos minsan naging supervisor. So hindi mo na alam kung ano ba talaga ang role mo. Minsan pabago-bago eh, di ba? Then ito naman, uh, let's say maaring project engineer, uh, QAQC, then supervisor, four months. Uh, hindi na, ano nga, hindi fix, hindi natin alam kung baga sabog yung ating plano. But those who are, uh, sabi nga, started their career uh, right, alam natin, nasaan ba ako? Am I a steady state expert? or a linear uh, progression career. Okay? Those with leadership and management career, you are linear. Tandaan natin, every project is unique and every project, you can gain experience from there. Sabi nga, uh, kung ang, every project has its own complexities, kung ano man yung ginagawa nating project, hindi kung pare-pareho o typical, ay wala tayong natututunan. We always learn for every project na hahawakan natin. And because of that, your value, your services, your cause, I mean, yung, uh, yung um, uh, how you sell, your, tanda, po, tanda po natin, as an OFW, we are selling our services. Ang binibenta po natin, it's not a product, we are still in business, ang, ang, ang binibenta po natin dito, yung ating pong services. And the more we are experienced in terms of leadership and management, uh, yung pong ating power, status, and then yung work natin, tumataas po yan. Why? Dito naman sa mga steady state, ito yung mga, uh, let's say, uh, technical career, yung mga technical, yung, yung mga nasa consulting, and that is fine. Maganda po yan. Nasa MEP, uh, walang problema. Pero, ang mangyayari po dyan, you become stagnant. Tanda po natin, whatever you do for a couple of years, three years, four years, routinary na po yan. 
Okay, so, but those who are working with engineering management, project management mainly, uh, these are the people who have a high leadership and management uh, profile, which can lead them into a, a higher earning. And with that, they can exit uh, an OFW process early than those doon sa mga technical, lalo na doon sa spiral, at saka lalo na doon sa mga transitory. Um, okay, prove it, prop. Yan yun. Yung never, yung go talent. So magkano bang sahod? So, Siyempre, gusto natin mag-exit ng maaga, hindi i-maximize natin ang income. If a mechanical engineer, okay, project engineer, uh, let's say uh, site engineer, earning 8,000 against the 23 with the same 8 hours uh, duty, ay dito na ako sa project manager. Pero tandaan natin, for every stages ng ating career, kailangan meron nag-upgrade tayo ng skills, uh, sabi nga, knowledge, skills, ability, and then experience. And that is competence. Kaya nga po, uh, ito lagi tinuturo sa mga estudyante natin, uh, when you enter into an organization, ang inaaral natin, hindi yung trabaho mo, alam mo na yun, ginagawa mo na lagi yan. Eh. Ang inaaral ko is yung boss ko, inaaral ko yung trabaho ng boss ko, at saka yung boss niya, yung second. So when you enter in uh, organization, lagi mong aaralin is yung um, your, the work of your boss, the responsibilities, duties and responsibilities ng yung boss at saka yung head niya or yung line manager niya. Why? Because with that, uh, there is a potential na you can get a, a better uh, position or better knowledge, better position, and better salary having those uh, titles. And working sa overseas, there are many ways bakit hindi na babalik ang isang expatriates. Paano? Number one is uh, due to health. Health. Maring health uh, issues. Uh, umuwi sa Pilipinas. Uh, something happened. Uh, nagkaroon ng, ng sakit. O uh, hindi na nakabalik. So, one indication na ready ka na for that next level pag ikaw ay na-assign na as reliever. Uh, yan. Isang indication na yan. In addition to your duties and responsibility, you are functioning to the next level. Yan yung mga typical sa memo, di ba? Ng uh, delegation, of, uh, delegation of authority. Uh, please be informed that uh, Engineer Sayed, for example, will be functioning as a project director in addition to his senior project management position. And having that, uh, there is an indication that you are preparing you are being prepared for the next position. Kaya nga, uh, sabi ko dito, uh, you can define your OFW duration and you can uh, maximize your uh, integration budget based on the uh, salary, based on the responsibilities we are taking from our company. Tanda natin na ang sweldo natin is always uh, uh, depende sa responsibility, sa problem na sinosolve po natin. Okay, so ang project manager, definitely, it's um, stressful. But uh, if you know the system, if you know what are the you know, uh, requirement for effective project management, madali lang po maging project managers. Sabi nga, ito po, lagi po sinasabi sa mga sudyante natin, ano yung tatlong requirement for effective project management? Number one is good leadership, good team, pangalawa, and then good system. If you have these three, madali pong maging project manager. Good leadership, good team, and then good system. Kaya nga po, when I was with Adnok for the past 10 years, um, every Friday, especially itong last three years ago, every Friday, nakaka-travel po ako sa, sa Bahrain. Um, bakit? Because I already established a system where my contractors and consultants are following Kaya po, uh, hindi po ma naging mahirap sa akin ang mag-travel at magturo po sa ibang mga lugar. So again, uh, ito po ay uh, how to define your OFW duration and maximize their integration budget o yung cost. Depende po yan uh, definitely sa inyong function and then depende yan sa inyong organization. Kung kayo ay working with the contractor, uh, definitely you will get a lower salary compared with consultant, which is in a middle class uh, organization. And if you will work with a project owner like Adno, Saudi Aramco, uh, Qatar Petroleum, you will get a better rate, a better salary compared to those people who are working as consultant 
and contractor. What I'm trying to say, having this in mind, alam na natin, Filipino, mechanical engineer, nasaan ka na? Alam mo na yung target mong uh, position, alam mo yung target mong organization. And sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, uh, we can consider this as a project. Your OFW journey can be considered as a project with strategy. Ngayon, uh, if you are working with the contractor, that's fine. Pero try to apply with consultants and project owner. Okay, so sabi nga, uh, tandaan po natin, kung makikita natin, di ba, dito sa, dito sa Middle East, kung kailan ka paalis, nag-resign ka, tsaka ka bibigyan ng salary increase. So, marami sa inyo tinamaan dyan dahil nangyayari yan. So, kaya nga, sabi ko nga kanina, one of the major reason why maraming project, uh, while maraming uh, mechanical engineer na hindi able makapag-enroll uh, or uh, makapag-take ng graduate degrees, it is because they are staying in a low paying position, hindi strategic. Kailangan strategic po tayo. Ang tandaan po natin, walang company na gusto kayong payamanin. It's up to you to decide. Okay? So, and sabi nga, it's more about exploitation. Baka mamaya, ang tagal-tagal mo na doon, may bagong darating, uh, mas bata, mas malaki ang sahod, uh, kakampo ka. Yun nga lang, sabi nga, uh, tignan po natin ang ating career progression. Pag ang inyong company, walang uh, career progression, walang tinatarget na training, walang tinatarget na uh, 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 salary increase, walang tinatarget na higher position para sa inyo, then you have to think twice. Do I have to stay dito sa company to na walang pag-asa in terms of, di ba? Kasi otherwise, you will prolong you will prolong your OFW journey and process. Okay? So, how to prepare your OFW exit plan through a comprehensive and effective reintegration program? Have a good start. Begin with the end in mind. In scope natin, uh, define your OFW duration in time. Maximize your integration budget. And then improve your OFW process. Improve your OFW process. And then, yung pangatlo is legacy. Okay? So, continuously improve your OFW process. Sabi nga natin, in, in the project management, pero tinatawag tayong input, tools and techniques, at saka output. Parang paglalaba din yan. Pag Friday, wag dyan tayo naglalaba. Uh, si Sis, uh, naglalaba kayo, di ba? So, ngayon, kung gusto mong tumagal ng paglalaba, hindi eh, mag-manual ka. Wala nang problema. Eh. Nasa iyo yun eh. So, depende yan sa iyo kung paano mo patatagalit ang iyong process as an OFW. Then, uh, dalawa din klase ang... ang uh, ang uh, washing machine okay meron din yung uh, manual yung bang, uh, walang dryer walang spinner di ba so again it all depends on how you would like to improve your process okay so yan yun so tandaan natin every activity is considered as a process i mean kayo mga nasa quality di ba so quality management you have to improve our OFW process every activity is a process and every process has input tools and techniques and output project management pinbook yan di ba so every process has an input tools and techniques again to washing machine and then output is yung uh, malinis na uh, nilabahan okay and then every process can be improved that's why dito po sa aking tip number 2 continuously improve your OFW process so I am a um, um, process management uh, continuously uh, continuous uh, performance uh, professional. Okay. So yung ginagawa, ginagawa ko, yung last assignment ko po sa ano, uh, we are, um, yung tinatawag po namin Shuruk team, uh, it is uh, composed of uh, professionals within the different uh plant or refinery. Ang target po ng grupo namin reporting with CEO is how we can improve our business processes. So that's why we are called uh, business processes project manager. And part ng aming uh, task is to define ano ba yung mga value-added activities na ginagawa ng ating organization. I-define natin ang value-added and then ano yung mga non-value-added o yung mga waste na ginagawa natin na hindi natin kailangan sa ating company, 
And in our case, hindi natin kailangan for our reintegration. So this is what we call yung, kung kaya kung pamilya kayo sa Lean, Six Sigma, Continuous Process Improvement, ito po yun. And how we can improve. And every OFW activity na ginagawa ninyo, either it is value-added or non-value-added activity. So value-added, kung ito ay sa business, anything na babayaran ng company, it is considered as value-added. Anything that you are, for example, kung kayo ay working with uh, consulting, Paano ba binabayaran ng consultant? Diba? So we are paid based on the drawings, uh, the documents, the calculation, the specifications we prepared. These are paid by the client. Pero meron din tayo mga non-value added activities within the consulting industry na kailangan which is necessary. Kagaya ng ano, uh, accounting, uh, HR, yung mga logistics, yung driver, So these are necessary ways pero kailangan natin 'yan but ang point dito is to minimize. So yung value added, ito yung mga babayar ng uh, uh, kliyente, i-emphasize natin 'yan, i-maximize natin yung mga necessary ways which is required para sa ating operation, we have to minimize. And those mga pure ways is to eliminate. Okay? Balikan natin yung ating OFW uh, process. There are many activities sa ating ginagawa as an OFW looking doon sa ating reintegration sa Philippines. Alin sa ating mga ginagawa o activities are value-added or non-value-added? Tandaan natin, meron ding necessary ways ha? and pure ways. Alin daan? So, minimize necessary non-value-added in our OFW process and maximize value-added activities for our integration. Okay? Balikan natin. Integration plan. We have to maximize value-added activities that can make us, number one, high-profile professional or increase our leadership and management skills. Ganun din sa atin. Pag kayo consultant, pag kayo ay bachelor's degree, sampu singko niyan. Anybody, any president na uupo sa atin, sa gobyerno po natin, isa lang ang goal po niyan. Lahat ay makagraduate ng college. Pero sabi nga, hindi po doon tapat tayo as an OFW. Because when you go back sa Pilipinas, ang taas po ng uh, tingin po nila sa atin when it comes to skill set, knowledge set, yan sa mga uh, uh, practice. Okay, kaya nga po, hanggat maaari, Uh, try to do, go to the next level which is yung um, uh, at least master's degree. Okay? Pangatlo, um, financially stable, uh, business oriented. Okay. So, so, yung, ang, ang goal mo natin dito is to maximize value added activities. And, okay, so again, um, alin dito sa mga ginagawa natin as an OFW ang necessary ways and pure waste na kailangan nating eliminate. I'm not saying not to watch Netflix. I'm watching Netflix, pero I'm not watching series. Pag nakita ko na series 1, 2, 3, 4, definitely uh, hindi ko na pinapanood yan. Ang pinapanood ko sa Netflix is only for one hour, two hours, yung mga movies na isang upo ang tapos, pero hindi yung series. Yung mga cha-cha, yung mga ganun. Hindi ko pinapanood yung bakit. Kasi, uh, Uh, ang Netflix, habang naka, nanonood ka, tuloy-tuloy yan hanggang sa, oh, teka, madaling araw na pala. Sayang, di ba? Sana ikonsumo na lang natin yung oras na yon para sa ating preparation for integration. Mobile agent. Kung ikaw yung mobile agent, uh, edi ikaw na. Ayan, ikaw yun. Okay? So, maubos ang oras mo, galit ka pag inabala ka, eh, ikaw yun. Uh, yun. Tapos, uh, yun lang. Okay? Tulpo is also good, pero baka namang ano. Oh, sige, okay na yan. Okay na yan yung mga Facebook. Oh, mamaya, mamaya naman. Oh, sige, anyway. Uh, okay yan, maganda yan. No? But, sabi nga, ilimit natin. Minimize yung necessary ways. Yung paglalaba, necessary ways yan. Uh, kailangan natin gawin yan. Otherwise, hindi tayo makakapagsot ng malid sa damit. But yung mga pure ways, ay i-assess po natin. Pwede naman kasing 
Uh, makinig na lang, hindi eh. ba kailangan mong nakatuto kasi sabang uh, kung talagang gusto mo si Rocky Tulpo, wala na problema, di makinig ka o di habang may ginagawa kang uh, yeah, importante. Pwede naman yan eh. Ayan. So again, uh, it's up to us how we prepare yung ating reintegration. Okay? So how to prepare your exit plan through comprehensive effective integration program? Have a good start, begin with the end in mind, uh, define your OFW duration, maximize your integration budget, continuously improve your OFW process, and lastly, uh, make a legacy. Um, Pinoy mechanical engineer, nasang ano ba? Uh, so, sabi natin dito, uh, yung start natin from graduation, ang targetin natin, maging engineering manager tayo, project manager, facility manager, or at least din, ano, kung huwag nag-reintegrate tayo sa Pilipina, ito po ang target po natin habang tayo po ay naandito sa Middle East. Okay? Ulitin ko, one of the reasons why you have low salary because you are working in a low-paying position. So, baka namang na-expect na kayo ng inyong mga company kung hindi ka mag-resign, kung hindi ka, hindi mo i-threat sila na alis ka, hindi ka ingresan, eh, wala po yung company yun. Kasi kaya nga po, uh, sinasabi ko, uh, sa akin, ano ba ang, every year, meron kayong assessment, di ba? Ano ba plano mo sa akin? Kung wala akong plano, eh, ako yung paplano sa sarili ko. Uh, di ba? Ayan. Okay, so, so, uh, when it comes to make a legacy, whatever accolade you have, uh, as an engineer, international professional engineer, uh, PMP, uh, and yung APEC, whatever, so, ikaw yan eh. Pero hindi yan transferable. Hindi yan magiging legacy sa iyong family. Kailangan you have to have a business. Okay? And business, kailangan dito may experience. I made a wrong decision before and I'm still suffering from that. But sabi nga, uh, life you know, must go on. We can learn from our mistake. We can refine our strategy. But ang point dito, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng business so that yung next generation ng uh, pamilya natin, they have their own uh, business and that will be your legacy on personal level. Okay? So, kailangan meron tayong... Kasi otherwise, what will happen is kagaya ka ng ibang mga kasama natin na after na mag-retire, wala na. Ay di wala na yung cash flow, and then doon maghihirap na yung next generation. Okay? Uh, sabi ni uh, T.D. Jake, success is not success without a successor. And that is true. Tayo, nanabang natin sa OF, as OFW, lagi natin titignan yung ating successor. What is our legacy for reintegration? Uh, legacy na iiwanan natin as an OFW. Ang sabi ko dito, don't be a little big boy. Actually, dito sa PSME, I'm not sure, pero tingin ko marami din ditong bonjing. Eh. Ano bonjing? Yung bang laki-laki na uh, matanda ng member ng PSME pero hindi pa rin naiisip na mag-share ng kanilang uh, talent and resources for the next generation. Eh, sila yung mga laging umaaten. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Ano bang seminar ng PSME? Uh, attend ako dyan. Pero uh, they have 20 years, 30 years experience pero hindi naman nag-share para sa next generation. Sabi nga, uh, uh, meron akong narinig before na ang pinakamaraming idea sa kamakakita ng pero ang pinakamaraming idea, makikita mo yan sa simenteryo. Maraming idea, hindi nagmaterialize because they did not go with succession. There is no success without successor. And make your mark on the world and live a legacy worth aspiring to. Kung OFW ka, ano ang iwanan mo sa Saudi Arabia? Sa, uh, sa Jubail, sa Bahrain, sa Singapore, ano, sino ka? Uh, di ba, kailangan meron kang iiwanan doon. Okay? Otherwise, parang si Bonjing, di ba? Ikaw na lang lagi ang tinuturuan. Ikaw na lang lagi ang uh, nagtitake. Sabi nga, hindi laging puro hingi. Kailangan nagbibigay din tayo. Okay? So, sabi nga natin kanina, uh, entrepreneurship para sa ating personal. And then when it comes naman sa PSME, share your expertise. Either HSE, uh, inspection, planning, uh, drafting, uh, utilities, share, share, share. Because sabi niya, uh, ang pinakamagaling na pag, uh, gain ng knowledge is by teaching. Because the more you teach, the more you gain knowledge. Kasi ikaw ang unang natututo eh, di ba? So syempre, ikaw nag research nag-aaral. So with that, uh, you are expanding your knowledge. So... Uh, wag tayong maging bonding member ng PSME 20 years na lagi namang naandoon lagi namang umaaten pero 
wala kang makita na nag-share. Yan. Kung tinamaan ka dito, di ikaw yun. At least na-realize mo na merong mga nakakakita rin. Okay? So, again, how to prepare your OFW exit plan through a comprehensive and effective integration program. Have a good start. Begin with end in mind. Define your OFW duration time. Uh, maximize your integration budget. Improve your OFW process. And then make a legacy. Thank you very much. And this is my contact number, contact details. In case you need some uh, advices at available ako, pwede naman. Okay? So thank you very much and God bless you.